But yeah, I think I'm um, moving on to the final point for today. Now, of course, you know, we've been going in, in into a lot of depth in regards to this whole youth discussion and conversation. But I'm thinking now, is it time now for a direct sale of football to come to the club? And do you think that we can realistically get one before the year does end? Uh, Joe, I'll let you start with this. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think generally, I mean, we've the, the the lack of sort of a defined direction and structure at the club is is partly why we have somewhat of a disjointed squad at the moment, why we have, you know, kind yeah. of so many sort of first team players coming towards the end of contracts and towards the end of sort of their their kind of peaks. So we don't really have any sort of really established players in that kind of like twenty four to like twenty seven bracket. You know, I think we used to have, you know, almost an entire team full of players who had you know, we're, we're still young, but had a lot of experience and we don't tend to have that many sort of really fantastic players in that kind of uh, sort of age bracket now. It's, it's you know, a lot of, uh, lot of sort of more slightly more older players and then some, some maybe some players in that age bracket who aren't as good. So from a, from this kind of an acquisition standpoint in terms of buying players, I don't think there's really been much of a strategy. You know, there's, you know, we've, we've kind of gone from buying, you know, Bakayoko and Drinkwater to buying a £71 million goalkeeper and not, not you know, not wanting to buy, not wanting to sort of pay buyout clauses for, for positions of need. And then, as you said, sort of the, the world record fee for a goalie. And don't get me wrong, I think Kepa's been exceptional, but I mean, just the sort of inconsistency in approach is a little bit peculiar at times. And, you know, we've kind of flip-flopped from having an, an AVB style manager to going back to hiring a Mourinho style manager and then going to sort of Conte and then going again to an incredibly attacking manager. You know, it, it just seems like there's, it, it's almost kind of like we, we have a two year cycle and then we just hit reset and then let's go again and let's hit, hit you know, hit the reset button and go again. And I think at, at some point, you know, the club has to hire some kind of sporting director in just to, just to oversee that the structure of where we're heading at the moment, because I think Sari is setting the kind of the fundamental style of the team in the right direction. You know, I think that there are, in, in a similar way to kind of Guardiola, you could get in a, an alternative manager to him. Maybe obviously not in terms of coaching, there would be a, maybe a slight drop off, but the kind of the infrastructure around that team now is that they, they will go and buy similar types of players. They have a very established way of playing. They have an established player model in terms of recruitment. And I think with Sari kind of setting that from a, from the manager standpoint, it would maybe be slightly easier to get in a director of football who then kind of fits that direction. So that would be something that I would I would really like to see. I know, I know we've we've kind of often spoken about someone like Michael Balak who who would probably come in more as a figurehead type person um, than, than someone who is maybe more of kind of a super scout or something like that. I don't necessarily think that we we need a, a, one of these kind of super scout director of football type people. Maybe just someone who. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know if, if we need realistically if we if we need someone like that. Um, I think maybe from from our perspective, you know, if you look back at kind of the the scouting we did pre or kind of I suppose during Mourinho's early kind of period in that sort of twenty twelve to twenty fourteen period, we were finding guys like Kevin De Bruyne and Courtois and and, and guys like Hazard and, and Salah. You know, I think Salah Hazard and sorry Salah Lukaku and and Courtois and De Bruyne was about what forty million pound outlay if that. You know, so we were able to find some really exceptional talent for not that much money. And I think we can probably do that again. But uh, yeah, it's just this this kind of model we have for for you know the, how the club is run is is so erratic. And you know, I mean, from my kind of day to day, I, I look at sort of business architecture, which is sort of the, the kind of structure of the bank and, and and sort of the the overall kind of governance and strategy and, and implementing all these sorts of things. And you look at you look at Chelsea, and it's just it's amazing that we're as successful as we are, given the the complete lack of direction. So. I was. I would like to say, you know, sort of just, just, just kind of sum things up, really. That I, I think Sari's direction from the playing style is incredibly positive, and I think in that respect, it would be, it would be great to get a, a director of football in to complement that, to kind of start setting the, the pathway of, of younger players um, in, into the first team. So not buying, I think as Alex, you know, famously, famously calls them these sort of roadblock type players who, you know, guys like Danny Drinkwater who. You know, regardless of of you know, he I don't think uh, Sari's played him this season. At least I can't remember him playing a minute. But the fact that he is in training means that someone, let's say like Marcel Lewis or one of these younger midfielder guys, isn't going to be able to train with the first team at sixteen because Danny Drinkwater is there. And you know, I mean, that's taking it really down to the bare bones. But you know, that sort of that some of these signings that we've made really are you know confusing. And you know, you, you, if you add up the Bakayoko fee, the Drinkwater fee, you know, the Morata fee, all of these sorts of 
fees that we've wasted on not necessarily top, top players. You know, you could go and buy Mbappe, you could go and buy Neymar if you bring through some of these young kids and not having to to play and not having to sort of invest, you know, 30, 40 million pounds on, on what are quite average Premier League players. So, you know, I think if we can get a direction in that has pathways that can give, you know, people like Hudson Adoy a, a kind of belief that they will have an opportunity. But it also means that we can not have to go and spend money on rubbish and actually go out and buy top, top players. I mean, I'd love to see Chelsea go and splash money on someone like Akadi, you know, just go and get in a top player. But the fact that we've spent so much money on average players historically, does that mean that we can then afford to go and splurge on a big player? I'd rather buy one big player each summer and then, you know, go and buy some, some kind of slightly more educated guesses than to sort of let's spend 30, 40 million pounds on four, four, four or five players. You know, it's, it's a bit baffling. But yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, I think we need to look at getting a, a director in who can who can set the, the, the sort of, you know, the kind of strategic direction and future of the club. Because, you know, I think Alex alluded to, to earlier, you know, that if Sari isn't here for, let's say he's here for a two, three year period, do we then just kind of adjust to the new manager's style? And, and, and you know, the fact that we're kind of flip-flopping between a manager and the, the, the sort of different manager styles means that you, as you're building up a squad, you know, then you become completely, you know, you could be, uh, I think Josh McEachern is probably the best example that he was playing under Ancelotti. You know, he was starting to become a bit of a core member of that squad. AVB comes in, doesn't like him. We never see him again in his career. You know, who knows how his career might have found out. So, you know, it, it's it's the, the fear of this happening to not just young players, but players that we've bought in as well. You know, Bakayoko may have been Conte's, you know, dream midfielder, but, you know, the, he's now on loan at AC Milan because, sorry, he maybe doesn't think he's particularly good or, or you know, there, there are lots of players that you could apply that to. So, you know, consistency will, will help us reduce the number of mistakes we make in the transfer market, but also allow us to spend, you know, infinitely more um, on, on better and, and more, more guaranteed players, I would say. So, yeah. You know, it's it's really really important that we try and establish it as soon as possible. And maybe if we didn't give long contracts to average players to that aren't really gonna yes. do anything, you know, Gary Kale is that really 150k a week? He's on he's on a lot of money, yeah. And I know I know that he his new contract was well over well over 120. So yeah. So it's no surprise that you create this scenario where you can't get rid of the players that you want to get rid of because you know they want big money, and you you know their transfer fees are very high as well. And then it, it, it continues the cycle of youth really struggling to get an opportunity and get a fair chance at things because, again, you know, with the uh, politics behind the scenes with the squads, of course, senior players who are on big money will be playing naturally over young players that get 5k a week. That makes quite a lot of sense. And, you know, you, you create this cycle where you only start to affect the loan army, which is then going to, you know, which is your main... Uh, money maker in that sense, you know, guys like Kurt Zuma, his second loan spell, you're getting eight million each for him, sixteen million over two years for one guy, and you've got about thirty nine other players on loan. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. But um, but Sofian, I know this is your area of expertise when it comes to, matter, you know, matters happening behind the scenes at the club. How how are you feeling about a director of football? Do you think that's the right direction to go down? I think we already have one, and that's Marina. I think that she's the one in charge of um, the direction we are we are going. I mean, she's the one who... I, I think that the the fact that we are signed players like Drinkwater and all that is, is not really a, a good thing. But in the good side of things, when I look back at what we were, uh, where we were six months ago, uh, suffering without the ball with Conte uh, and now with Sarri with Jorginho uh, with the most possession in, in Europe and, and all that I think that we are going slowly surely but slow so we are going to, to the right direction I don't think that we will ever have a, a director of football simply because I don't see Marina giving her power I don't think that uh, when you have that amount of power, you, you can give it to someone else. Uh, and I mean, like, like I said, I think that in the big, in the bigger picture, we are going in the right direction. I think that Sari is a is a proof of that, and that's not perfect, but that's still better than what we used to to have. And for for me, the only worry is if Sari leaves in uh, one year or two. If, uh, I don't know, if Simeon is free, I mean, I really hope that we are not going to, to get someone like Simeon. Or, I don't know, it to change back, like Joe said, hit the reset button again and move on from another direction and all that. 
that small new oil. Mm. Okay. Okay, but um, yeah, you guys, I mean, I'm thinking for director of football, personally, I would like to see Michael Ballack coming back. I, I like to, you know, I like to have old figureheads back at the club where they can speak to people like Marino and hopefully, you know, with their experience as professional players, that's going to potentially help persuade over certain footballing decisions. I think that would be the great thing. I, I think realistically, what other options are there? I mean, maybe... Emanalo might return if, if talks of no. him potentially leaving Monaco are true. But I mean, I don't want to even get into what's happening with Monaco right now. But um, but yeah, I, I think um, 